Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, let's start this way. That way, things we say can be part of the podcast. Sounds good. All right, here we go. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, podcast. We have a special guest today. We have got Mr. Joe Pierce, a senior contributor for the Rideshare Guy. Joe is uh, a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he does a lot of research. He makes a lot of videos for you guys. And uh, given the current environment, I thought, well... Oh, Shit, Joe, Joe would be a great guy to have on the call. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, uh, here is Joe Pierce. Thank you for having me, Jay. I'm, I'm glad to be back for our second uh, second podcast now. There we go. There we go. Yes. So you, you can speak freely here uh, to sh share how you feel about everything. So let's start off with the elephant that's in the room and uh, is blocking the sunlight, uh, the co coronavirus. Uh I I I just can't quite get my get my arms around this thing. I mean, I I'm I'm staying home and I just bought a month's worth of food. I still take my walks in the morning. I can't go to the health club anymore. I can I can still walk. There's like no cars in the streets. It's like a ghost town. Um and and everyone's in a bit of a panic, you know? A lot of people are yeah, have lost their revenue, you know, and it's like there's no certainty that this thing's going to be over in like three months. Who knows? What's your take on this thing? Yeah, it's pretty incredible to see. I mean, like I was early on, this was maybe a couple of weeks ago when all the, all this was first being reported. I was like, okay, you know, this is, it's, it's serious in Italy right now. It's obviously been serious in China for a while. I didn't know what, what would happen here in the States, but yeah, I mean, two weeks later and now we're, we're basically, it feels like on lock on lockdown. I mean, granted we can come to an, to and fro and still still order food from restaurants and whatnot but like here in minnesota they've shut down restaurants you can still do takeout and, and all that but yeah it's it's incredible to see all of the the businesses that are completely just not not non-operational right now um yeah i don't know what how long it's going to last i'm trying to be optimistic in that i think it, it's going to be temporary and hopefully not months because that would be That'd be tough for it to, for it to last months. Well, you, um, well, you, well, but you yeah. know, well, you know, the government is uh, tentatively planning, you know, we'll see if it happens, to send everybody a $1,000 check at the beginning of uh, April and then another one in the middle of May. So that gives you an idea that they're not thinking this thing's going to be over sure. <laughs> at the end of yep. next month, right? Um, but, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, my I'm wondering like when will these businesses be able to open their doors again because I mean here the restaurants I think they're supposed to stay clo closed to the public until the 27th or maybe April 1st mm. and will that be a hard date will they hit that date and then will people be able to come out of their houses again and, and you know because obviously the revenue streams are going to be slow but sure like people are just going to slowly start to to begin spending money again um, but it's you know it's people aren't just going to jump in and start <laughs> They don't, Living willy nilly, you know. They, well, they they can't. They don't have the money. I mean, yeah, right. waiter, waiters, yeah. hospitality, very true. Yeah, uh, you know, airlines. Yeah. All you know, I heard a uh, Hyatt was laying off like seventy thousand people. You know, it's it's wow. uh it's crazy, and it is. Yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, and restaurants. How how long can restaurants go? You know, with uh, a fraction yeah. of, of their yeah. their revenue, right? Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. Correct. So I um so it's the same same up where you are. Yeah. I, I just I just heard on the news that that in New York every single business has to have at least seventy five percent of their people working from home. That means only wow. one, one out of four can be in an office uh working. Yeah. yeah. Um hmm. So yeah, um, so you're 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 not driving at all right now, right? I haven't driven. Right yeah, I haven't driven since uh, uh, I would say the first week in, in February, and oh, uh, okay. you know, and then I then I started to hear about this thing, and and I considered yep. it. I considered driving just to write this write a story about it, but I I live with an octogenarian, someone over eighty, and just the idea oh, that sure. I could get it, and then she could get it, and then. I would I would just be terrible, so I can't. Yeah. I just I just can't risk it. Um, yeah, I I drove Monday. Um, I think I drove about ten hours. Gave nineteen rides. I was just spraying disinfectant in between in between passengers, mm -hmm. um, and I was still planning on driving Tuesday. But then, like my wife, she's a hairstylist, and mm. it ended up where she they suspend, suspended um, salon, suspended business, or stopped business here for the next ten days. This was starting yesterday and that there was part of me that that was just thinking you know on tuesday i was just like well maybe i should should try and figure out some alternatives right now instead of driving i mean i i don't want to treat it lightly so i don't want to be out there um you know giving having 20 different people get into my car every single day right it's, that just heightens the possibility of me getting it granted i'm a younger person i'm not you know i'm not older than 60 so it's i'm not it, it seems like I wouldn't be as susceptible to the effects, but also, but but it's also I can spread that mm -hmm. to other people, and that's the thing I think a lot of young young people aren't realizing is that sure maybe you can recover and you'll be fine, mm -hmm. but you're spreading it, it to people that probably can't. So that's that's the thing that people have to think about. Yeah, and they're also finding over in Italy and and in Europe that a lot of young people are are fighting for their life. So oh, it's, really, it's not yeah. like it's yeah. not like so this no brainer that if you're under sixty, you're going to be fine. Um, this thing seems to be pretty virulent and, uh, and, and it really can, uh, kill anybody. Although if you are over 80, your chances are, are much worse, but, sure. um, yeah. So, um, huh. So, so this has really impacted you then because your, your wife can't work now and, and your driving is, is being curtailed because you don't want to get sick or pass it on to somebody else. And I think that's, that's like half the country, you know? The, yep. just so yeah. you know you, you, it just like suddenly came, came to a kind of a screeching halt and there are still drivers who are driving because they have to um we did a survey yes. and 70 percent of drivers need to drive to make money um i'm still i'm sure some of those pe some of those drivers are figuring out something else to do and they're not going to drive because they don't want to get sick but there's still a lot of drivers out there who are driving and uh it's uh i i i saw an article that said that uh, it was the Uber CFO. He said the demand is has gone down as low as fifty percent of normal in some areas of the country. So they're just people are staying home. They're not obviously, you know, taking Ubers like they like they used to. Did you find the demand was low? Um, you did nineteen rides, no, so the, the, yeah, yeah. It was so Monday. It was pretty consistent. But here's here's the way I see it. I think things really started to to progress late last week. I think a lot of people were still planning on traveling and whatnot. So people were still out of – they were still traveling on Monday and Tuesday, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's going to whittle down as, you know, I mean, next week it should be very slow. Um, but, yeah, I think a lot of – I think I gave maybe four four airport trips to and from on Monday. Mm -hmm. And so one of the gals that I gave a ride to, she was returning home for basically the foreseeable future. So that's, that was the initial, like, people are going to be doing that travel I mean, I think earlier this week, probably, and then you know, it's just gonna, it's just gonna whittle completely die down. It's just not gonna be there. But yeah, Monday was pretty consistent. I mean, people were still kind of going about life, and yeah. I was still going about life. I wasn't so much concerned about the virus, and you know, it just kind of hit me. It's just like, you know, I mean, I could pause this. And the biggest thing is, my wife is gonna be off for those ten days, so I was like, you know, maybe I can just kind of coincide that with her, um, and and just not expose myself to anything. Right, right. And, um, I have a friend in Thailand, and uh, she works at a, a, a bar, and all the bars in Bangkok, all the restaurants, not, not, 
all the bars, cinemas, any kind of entertainment uh, is closed until the end of the month. And yeah. I'm like, it's not going to be fixed in two weeks. It's, it's like, it's not going to, it's just not going to stop. You know, this is a much bigger thing than that. Uh, I, I think I think the whole month of April we're just going to be shut down. I really do. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, it's very possible. I mean, Ch- China, China as of today has no new cases. So this thing started in China in December, and now three months, three and a half months later, you know, here we are, where they're finally at the point where they don't have any any new cases, and life's kind of getting back to normal. Yeah, I think at, at what China did they kind of they're they're back to work and 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 doing. They're, is that true now? Did, is that what you've? What I've what I've heard is yeah they're they're just starting to okay. to get to to start engaging back into like normal life. But they were in lockdown yeah. for several months. I mean, not leaving their house. Yep. You know. Um, yep. Yeah. So pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so what 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 other things have you um, have you been making videos about? What's what's kind of piquing your interest uh, besides this uh, coronavirus? Uh, regards to being a rideshare driver. Yeah, I mean, I'm just doing the. I've got my same typical cue that uh, of videos, um, the some the stuff that we've just published. I think we're publishing. So there's, it's a new um, video series idea, and I was thinking that maybe you could could you know um, contribute some videos to this too. Basically, it's, the concept is rideshare stories, and it's basically. I mean, a lot of the videos we do, we try to teach, and you know. Um, and, and that type of stuff, but this is more of a, you know, stories as driving, driving, ri- from driving rideshare. So the first one, I don't know when we're going to publish, but it's it, this. The idea kind of came to me to me when I had my first podcast with you, where I was talking about the that scary experience that I had with Uber, where I had a saw my passenger get robbed at gunpoint right in front of me. Mm, right. So that that's what the video, yeah, that's what the video will talk about and just kind of explain that story, which that happened four years ago. But then, you know, the concept of just, I, I just thought of that rideshare stories concept to where, to where we can source, you know, stories from uh, the commenters, the YouTube subscribers, mm-hmm. you know, contributors like you and others. Mm-hmm. Can, you know, I'm sure that you have stories, you know, and like I was saying, I'm, I'm 95% of my rides in, in my six years of rideshare have been daytime rides. So right. I don't have many stories, but I know, I mean, I have stories, but not as many as someone that's, driven Friday, Saturday night for those amount of that amount of time. I guarantee that they've got quite a bit of stories to tell. So, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a cool concept. And I think for the time being, we're going to maybe publish one video a month, uh, just, uh, in the ride share stories series. Yeah. I could tell the story about the voluptuous, uh, middle-aged woman who hit on me. (laughs) Oh gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. That was pretty funny. Pretty funny story. Uh, uh, she said, uh, she said, she gave, she gave me her, uh, she said, do you want my number? She, she, no, what she said, uh, what are, what did she say? Uh, she said, uh, why don't you give me, give me your number in case I want, I want to ride later. <laughs> and I oh, said, sure. yep. I, I said, yeah, you can just do it the old fashioned way and use the app. Correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She's very touchy, you know, touching my shoulder. And oh, geez. she said, yeah. uh, she said, uh. She says, don't worry, I, I, I like older men like you. I was like, okay. <laughs> yep, you, you got to yeah. watch yourself out there. You yeah, yeah. watch yourself out yeah. there. Yeah, she had had something to drink too, so she was feeling feeling oh, good. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. There's a video right there. Boom. Yes. Just like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Let's talk about AB5, which, which has, you know, obviously pales in comparison to, uh, what's going on with the coronavirus, COVID-19. But it's, I, I found it so interesting that Uber and Lyft have fought so hard to say we're independent contractors. Um, and now that this thing is happening, they're off, they want to offer us sick pay, you know, if you get sick. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not what you would do if we were really independent contractors, you know, you wouldn't care because, yeah. you know, that's, that's on us. And, um, but no, you know, they want, they want to give a sick pay. Uh, I, I think mostly they want to give a sick pay so that we don't, we don't keep trying to work when we're sick because they yes. want to avoid the PR yeah. nightmare, which is Uber driver spreads coronavirus, you know, for four days in his car and, you know, Correct. 20 people are now, contagious and sick you know 
So they want to make it easy for someone who's got it to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sit this out for 14 days and, and get paid. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 Do you, I haven't heard of anyone actually getting any money yet. There hasn't, there doesn't seem to be any, uh, report. We did, we did hear from one of our contributors yesterday during our call that, uh, he knew of, of, of a few drivers who were sick who were trying to get to, to get the money. So once we know how that shakes out, but no one seems to know how much people are going to get or how easy it is to get it or what you have to do to get it. Um, I think what I heard, I think, and I think Harry maybe tweeted about this, um, uh, that it, it will be an average of your earnings over the last six months. So mm, mm. I think that that's what someone would get paid, get paid for a couple, couple weeks is, you know, just that average, mm, which, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, like like you said, we, we've heard that drivers are being promised this, but is but is are people actually getting? I'm assuming they will, because you know, for Uber to offer this, it's mm-hmm. and then pull the rug out would be would be terrible. But yeah, it's uh, and I I mean, say what you will about Uber. I don't know if Lyft has has put anything out about this, but I that's that's a that's a good a good gesture, I would say. I mean, for especially yes. for someone that's worried about getting sick. Um, mm-hmm. and, and relies on Uber full time, you know, they can hopefully rely on a couple of weeks of, of basically unemployment pay kind of a thing. Right, right, right. No, I, I think, yep. I think that's great. And then, yeah. and then you add to that, you know, a thousand dollars next month and a thousand dollars in May from the government, you know, yeah, yeah. it's still not, it's still a fraction of what you could earn, you know, if you could actually drive yep. full time, regular time, but um, you know, that's but not, back to that's 85 not. so you you've been driving with the conditions or you had been driving with the the information up front and all of that correct that was available in san francisco or or no um what do you mean so the on the accept screen where you're given what you're going to get paid where you're headed all that stuff was that available in san fran oh 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 yeah so i've uh i mostly drive for lyft so um, oh, Lyft, I, yep. I yeah, Lyft, 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 Lyft yeah. doesn't provide that. I did do a few rides for Uber just to see it, and yeah, I saw the screen and 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 all of that. But um, and that's great. Hell, that's 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 yeah. that's phenomenal. They they sh- wish they'd been doing that, you know, a much longer time. It didn't seem to, you know, break the system. Um, well, you're actually being treated like true independent contractors for once, instead of, you know, I mean, that's the biggest thing that AB five has exposed is. We're not independent contractors. You are not. When we take a job, we have no information on that job besides where that person is. We where don't, we don't know what we're going to get paid. You know, that's and that's the biggest thing that AB5 will expose. And I, I believe this this will. I mean, I feel like we're going to continue to be independent contractors. We're not going to be employees, but we're going to be true independent contractors in that we're going to get the proper information up front. And that's and, and the big thing, too, is going forward price the the. Dic- how they dictate price like that's that's not treating us as independent contractors either that's exactly how you treat an employee so yeah 85 is exposing lyft and uber for what they they're practicing they've been practicing for years now and yes it, it's going to take time i mean mm-hmm. we're i'm not going to see changes like this in minnesota probably for another year um getting that type of information but it's going to happen eventually i believe yeah I, no I, th- I think you're right i think you're right um because they desperately don't want us to be employees and uh, yeah, so they're slowly rolling out things that that give us a little bit more control. I, d- I still don't know how they're going to deal with the we can't price our own rides, you know, issue that we don't have any well, control and, and over pricing that, it. Yeah, yeah, I view that as it's it's tough because how are you going to allow like what? I don't know if you've you know analyzed it or or, or thought you know deeply about it, but how how would we be able to price? Like what if someone if someone's really going to price themselves really low, if a lot of drivers choose to go that route, will drivers that decide to price on the higher end ever even get a ride? That's right. what I'm kind of well. That's what we saw. Worried about yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we saw with um, you know their U- Uber made a few changes where if you were if you were at an airport, um, you could uh, you could adjust. You can do the surge. You yeah. Could, yeah. You yep. could increase your price. But it turns out to just be a race to the bottom. So, um, yes. yeah, there's, yeah. So, like, if if I were a plumber, you know, I could go and say, look, I, I charge twice as much as other plumbers do, but I can do the work in half the time. And if you look at yeah. all my recommendations, I do excellent, excellent quality work. 
So sure. you're basically paying more, but you're getting it in half the time, and uh, and it's going to be excellent work. I can't do that. You know, there's no way to measure Correct. the quality experience that someone has in my car versus you know the experience somebody has with a new driver in a in a you know in an old Prius C, right? You just correct. There's no yes. way, no way to make that distinction. So yes, it's a difficult. Uh, yeah, that is the tough. You, there's really the dif- the differentiators aren't there. I mean, granted, rating, but rating is your on Lyft. What it's your last 100 ratings. So there's no there's not a huge difference between you who have been a driver for years versus someone that's just given 100 rides. Like that rating could be very similar. Yeah. Um, there's really nothing that distinguishes besides the vehicle type and. Mm-hmm. And passengers don't even really have that choice on a base lift or a base Uber, uh, um, they, Uber X. To, they'd almost yeah. need to, they'd almost need to create a new number, some kind of a number that would incorporate you know like your car, the quality of your car, your rating, sure. how long you've been driving, um, yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, number of accidents, uh, number of complaints, uh, all kinds of things. Then the, yes. th- then the number would actually yep, mean something. Sure. Yeah. Then you could charge Correct. more yeah, based on your number. Um, yep, yep. Yeah. So what do you think about being a driver now in 2020? Do you, do you still think it's a, a, a good thing to do? Or do you think it's the, 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 the good days have just passed us by and it's, it's never going to be really that good again? No, I absolutely do. And I mean, I think things will change for the better with this what AB5 is doing to the landscape. So yep. I, I do feel like things will, things will improve for the driver. That's that's my honest opinion. I mean, getting this information up front is huge, like driving for Lyft for years exclusive. And they did they pulled their shit last year, and then I stopped and started driving for Uber. And this is the first time where I was getting the trip duration on accept screen, which uh-huh. is huge. To be mm. able to know that, especially during like rush hour periods, you can choose, oh, this, there was one day, I knew this ride was going to bring me an hour out of the city mm-hmm. during a, like a rush hour period. And I just snap denied it right there. And then mm-hmm. in the, if that was a Lyft ride, when I was driving for Lyft, I would have accepted that and gone to that pickup location and said, Oh my God, you're going an hour away. And I would have probably given the ride. I don't know. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's driving for Uber over the past few months, getting that, just that, that information alone is so huge. Yeah. And if I were to drive for Lyft now without that information, it would just, sometimes it would feel like I'm just driving blind. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I mean, so yeah, it's, I, I will will still continue to recommend. What's that? You're optimistic. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. I absolutely am. I'm, I'm typically optimistic with things. I mean, it's, but, but yeah, I feel like I'll still recommend for people to drive rideshare and especially what I've tried to convince people in Minneapolis to do drivers drive for Uber. Lyft does not deserve you as a driver right now, the rates are absolutely ridiculous. Mm. I still can't believe they're still in place. I cannot believe it. Um, it's, it's beyond me, but I think a lot of these drivers look at it as, Oh, Lyft's paying me from the moment that I accept the ride, Mm -hmm. but they're paying you at a 50% reduction, 50% reduced mileage rate. Like they're, they're pulling money from you for this exact same ride. You can make 15, 20% more with Uber for doing the exact same thing. So Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's mind boggling to me. You can you can sense my passion with yeah. how I mean Lyft just yeah I can't believe those rates are still in in place. Yeah, but I remember, they must still be working out for them. I remember I remember when that came out. I was like, what? This is just yeah. this is crazy. I know, and it's like being spurred by a lover too, because because you know yes. Lyft, Lyft Lyft has been good in the past, and then they pulled some bullshit, and he just like yes. Oh, I want so much to be in bed with you, but you're just <laughs> you're just being like shitty, and I I can't do it, and it and it hurts, you know, because you you have a past, you know, you have a history, and and it was really good, so it's it's kind of heartbreaking, but um, I'm I'm glad you're happy with uh with Uber, um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, and I was I was such a Lyft loyalist, like I became a Lyft. This was six years ago, before yes. this was even. I mean, people didn't even know of Rise here. I became a Lyft driver before I became an Uber driver. So I was there at the very beginning with Lyft, and I've always appreciated what they've done to push the ball forward for drivers, programs, bonuses, mm-hmm. um, a lot of this stuff. Lyft has always pioneered that stuff. And by them going this direction, I mean, 
for someone to look at the numbers and think, oh, this is drivers are going to be getting paid better or, or compensated better, better for their time. I have no clue what numbers they were looking at. So, yeah, it's I've had conversations with people from Lyft and it's apparently it's fallen on deaf ears because these rates have been in place for, gosh, six months now. Yeah. So yeah. it is what it is. I'm I'm still I, I refuse to drive for Lyft in my market and I think all drivers should. But that's just my two pennies. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to wrap it up here. Did you did you see the story about the guy who's blind and he's got a dog um, and Five times now, he he's been refused a ride uh, because of the dog by Uber and Lyft drivers, and uh, he takes a he takes a video every time he you know someone comes to pick him up, and five times he's taken them to court and uh, and they've been deactivated as drivers and they had to pay a fine, and I thought wow good on him you know absolutely I mean I'm thinking thank God I've got my eyes thank God I can see you know. <laughs> And yeah. and I'm gonna say no to a blind man who's got a dog, right? I was like, it's the law. These drivers have to know it's the law. You I know have to give them a ride. I know it's yeah. the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. I was like, so just saying out there, drivers, if you got a dog, pick up a dog. They're better than people, and uh, it's a privilege <laughs> to have that uh, little spirit animal in your car for a little bit, and uh, yeah, be grateful you, you can see and. Uh, Go uh, go to your thing, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and then did you see the story about the farting? <laughs> so there was a uh, <laughs> there was a it was a pool a pool or a shared I don't know, and uh, there's like two guys in the back and one guy farts three times in a row, nasty farts, and uh, and and the guy uh, <laughs> and the guy in the back says. Uh, are you are going to take me me home first, right? <laughs> and uh, and the guy, I think he, he he was supposed to take the other guy, uh, but I think he asked him to get out of the car because he he was obviously yes. <laughs> too, wow too crazy. But the things you know, the things we have to uh, yeah to deal with. I've had people fart in my car, and uh, you know, I just roll the window down and. You know, let them know. I know what they did, and uh, you know, just let it air, just let it air, air out a little bit. But it's pretty funny. Yeah, luckily, luckily, I don't think I ran into that too often. The only the only smells that really stick out are when you know when you pick up somebody that's been drinking the night before. You can definitely smell that booze on them. Oh, that's there, one of the it's one kind of, of it's kind of a outside of, yeah yeah it's kind of a sweet unctuous yeah yes, yeah somebody yeah. somebody got in my car and I said, hey, big night last night, huh? He goes, yeah. How'd you know? I said, dude, you, you, yeah, you, you can smell it. Really, yes. really? You know, and they're surprised. Yeah. But yeah, we get to yep. know that. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Life on the road. All right, Mr. Joe Pierce. Uh, any last words of wisdom you want to put out there for uh, Dojo Nation? Yeah, I just I want uh, rideshare drivers to try and stay optimistic. Hopefully. Drivers are, are doing well and, and able to pay their bills. And yeah, that thousand dollars from the government sounds like a lot of a lot of people could use it right now. So I, I hope that happens and and just want everybody to stay healthy out there. Great. Good advice. And uh thanks very much, Joe. It's great having you on. Of course, Jay. Thanks for having me. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.